Hello everyone. Welcome to Maths JDN Medicine videos and lectures. Today's topic will be derivatives of pharyngeal pouches and clefts. So here is an overview of what we'll see today. So let's begin. Derivatives of pharyngeal arches. We'll see that in another video. So here's the derivatives. So first we'll see the basic structure of the pouches and the clefts, the location, the content of the arches, where they are located in the body and how many arches or clefts are present. So I'm just drawing the structure. So there are total six arches. These round structures are the arches. The fifth arch gets disappeared. So that makes a total of five arches. First, second, third, fourth and the sixth. Now we'll see the content. There are three contents. One is the nerve, which will give specific nerves to the respective pharyngeal arch. Then the artery and the cartilage. Nerves can be like the mandibular and the maxillary nerve for the first arch, facial nerve for the second, glossopharyngeal for the third. And the cartilages are used to provide uh, or form the bones and the ligaments of the head and neck, like the skull, the larynx, the trachea. And the arteries give respective pharyngeal arteries, which you'll see in another video. Okay, now see, let's see the three layers of the pharyngeal arches. So the outer layer is called the ectoderm. The middle layer is called the mesoderm, which forms the muscle of the respective arch. And the inner layer is called the endoderm. Now, we, in the parallel lines between the arches, the outer side is called the pharyngeal cleft. So we have the first, second, third and the fourth pharyngeal cleft and the inner side is called the pharyngeal pouch which is first, second, third and fourth pouch and the between and the middle portion between that is called the pharyngeal membrane. So now let's see where it is exactly located in the body. It is located in the cervical region uh, so that's why it's called the pharynx like the for example the nasopharynx oropharynx so that's where the, it's located so we'll see in a development fe developing fetus where it's located this is the epicardial bulge or the epicardium of the fetus and this is what is the pharyngeal arches just about the epicardium epicardium is where the heart of the fetus is located so now let's see when the arches develop let's see its derivatives after the arches develop so I'll draw an overall structure of how it looks after it's developed I'll be drawing both the sides and for clear applying for getting better knowledge and for better understanding These few structures get developed. This is the tuberculum impar, uh, which along with the lingual swellings form the posterior, sorry, anterior two third of the tongue. This is the foramen cecum. This is the foramen cecum. This is the cranial part. 
cranial and this is the caudal part of the hypobrachial eminence so the cranial part forms the posterior one third of the tongue and the caudal part forms the epiglottis so let's write that down it forms epiglottis this black colored portion is the laryngeal orifice which is the nothing but the laryngeal or the inlet to the trachea now for better understanding I'm just naming these arches so that it doesn't get confused first second third fourth and the sixth pharyngeal arch as you have said fifth gets disappeared so now we come to the pouch and the clefts so this the first pouch pharyngeal pouch it forms the tubo tympanic recess so it forms tubo tympanic recess forms the auditory tube inner inner ear cavity or the middle ear cavity and the mastoid andrum this is the first pharyngeal cleft which forms the external auditory meters now we come to the first pharyngeal membrane which forms the eardrum or the tympanic membrane now uh, we'll see an overview structure of the ear to get a better understanding so as said the middle ear cavity and the eustachian tube which is the auditory tube and the mastoid antrum is formed by the first pharyngeal pouch the tympanic membrane or the eardrum formed by the first pharyngeal membrane and the ear canal formed by the first pharyngeal cleft this is the mastoid antrum pico mastoid antrum present just above the mastoid bone the second pharyngeal pouch as we have written here forms a palatine tonsil now the third pharyngeal pouch there is a dorsal barbar part and the and a ventral tubal part the tubal part which is a long and forms the thymus and the dorsal bulbar part forms the parathyroid three as from the third pharyngeal pouch or also called the inferior parathyroid as it migrates downwards in the later stage the fourth pharyngeal pouch forms the parathyroid four or the superior parathyroid and it also combines with the fifth pharyngeal pouch forming a complex called the ultimobranchial body the, this complex has neural crest cells which forms the c cells or the parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland that's all for the pouches now we see the cleft first cleft is clear which forms the external auditory meters or the ear canal <clears throat> the second third and the fourth clefts pharyngeal clefts gets disappeared because the second arch and the epicardial ridge protrudes to fuse with each other and form this gap in between which is a green color here called the cervical sinus and we see this is the epicardial ridge so that's all for this video hope you liked it if you did uh, do share like and subscribe the channel and please do comment below on the topics that you would like me to demonstrate thank you